Hello, my name is Deandra Ryan Moss. Welcome to part two of the What the Function series, where we explore functions in JavaScript. In this part, we're going to be talking about writing our own functions. So the first thing we need to know is what's the syntax for creating a function? Well, there's a couple different syntactical styles for declaring a function. So the first style of invocation looks like this. We go ahead and declare a variable, not unlike if we were just declaring a string or a Boolean. So right here will be the name of our function. And then on the other side of the equal sign, we use the keyword function, followed by a set of parentheses, followed by a set of curly braces. Inside here will be all of the logic that we need for our function. And inside the parentheses will be all the arguments. So I'll get into detail what I mean by those in just a second. The second style of function declaration looks like this. We use the function keyword, followed by the name of our function, followed by parentheses, and then followed by curly braces. Once again, our arguments go inside of the parentheses, and the logic of our function goes inside the curly braces. So both of these styles of invocation work. Um, there's a couple subtle differences between the two of them. We'll cover them a little bit later, but feel free to use either one and definitely try out both. All right, so now we know the syntax for declaring functions. Let's try a couple of examples. And I'll start with a function called add1. So add1 is going to be a function that takes in a number, increases it by one, and then returns that value. So just like when we're working with pre-built functions, whenever we're writing functions, the very first question we need to ask ourselves is what does the function take in and what does it output? In this case, it takes in one argument, a number. So any arguments that our function takes in go in the parentheses. And I can choose whatever word to go in here I wanted. I could, for example, call this potato if I wanted. Uh, that wouldn't be very useful because it does not take in potatoes, it takes in numbers. So it's best to name your arguments based on whatever you expect them to be. So now I can use the word number inside the body of my function. All right, so we want add1 to add to our number. So let's go ahead and declare a variable called increased that equals number plus one. And we know that we want increased to be our output. So syntactically what we do is we use the keyword return followed by increased. That means that the function is going to output the value of increased. So now add1 has input, a number, and output. That number increased by one. So let's try it out. Sure enough, when we run add1 and pass in 2, our output is 3. So something else to keep in mind with the keyword return is that whenever the function hits the word return, it's going to stop running. So if I were to write a line of code down here and run it, notice we don't get the word test console logged. That's because after a return statement is hit, none of the code that follows it is run. So it's important to keep that in mind. If there's any other logic you want your code to perform, make sure it goes before the return statement. Great. Let's take a look at a second function. I'm going to use a diff the different function invocation style for this one. So I want this function to be called log increased. And the idea is that it takes in a number, it increases that number by one, and then it logs that number to the console. So what's nice is we can actually use the function that we've already written. So I can go ahead and say variable increased equals add one of number. And then I can console.log increased. Let's check it out. And sure enough, when I log increased 4, 5 is logged to the console. So we always want to come back to this question of what does our function input and what does it output. In this case, our input is one number. And notice that there's no output. It's really easy to tell if a function that we write has output or not, because if it does, it will have a return statement. We don't have any return statement in here. We merely have this console.log statement that induces a behavior, that is, a number being logged, but it doesn't actually return anything. Another way we can test this is by going ahead and saving output into a variable. So when we check if output is equal to undefined, 
we're going to get true. That's because log increased has no output. All right, let's take a look at another function. This one's called say hi. So say hi has no input. It merely console.logs hi. So say hi both has no input and no output. So when we run say hi, we don't need to put anything into the parentheses. It's going to console log hi no matter what. And in fact, we could try slipping something into the parentheses, and it's not going to affect the behavior of the function. Notice, however, that it's still critical that we put the parentheses after our function. Say hi without the parentheses represents the function itself, whereas say hi with the parentheses represents the result of the function, in this case, hi being logged. All right, let's take a look at just one more example. This one is called get key. And this is going to take in a object and a key. And we are going to return any value of the object with that key. So let's try it out. If we run get key and pass in an object, and then we want to get the value for the key name, Sure enough, it successfully retrieves the value of name. So it's important to notice with this function that we're passing in both an object and a string. There's a couple important takeaways here. The first is that we're allowed to have two arguments. In fact, we're allowed to have as many arguments as we want. The second thing is that these arguments can really be anything we want. We saw up here that they could be numbers, and down here we're seeing that they can also be objects or strings. In the next section, we'll see that these arguments can actually be functions, but I don't want to get too much into that right now. The other thing to know is that, once again, we always want to ask, what's our input, what's our output? We've dealt with the question of what the input is, what about the output? Well, in this case, we don't know exactly what type the output's going to be. It's just going to be whatever this value is on our object. So now that we've looked at a few examples of functions we might write, Let's talk about some basic strategies that will help us write slightly more complicated functions. What if we wanted to write a function called least? This function will take in an array of numbers and it will return the least value. So this is a little more complicated than anything we've seen so far. So a really good place to start is by thinking about what are a couple examples of input? Well, I might have this array. If I were working with this array, I would want this function to return 1, the first value. So I might think to myself, all right, if I return array at index 0, that's going to give me out this lowest number. So this is the danger of using examples. When you're using examples, you can't just use 1, because while this code would work for this particular array, it wouldn't work for this array. This array should return value at index 2. And what if we had an even longer array? This should return the last index, an index that might not be defined on some other inputs. So I think we're starting to see just how tricky this can be. Examples really are critical in thinking about how our functions will work, but we have to make sure we come up with multiple examples and examples that look different. Because we can see that while this code would work for the very first array that I've shown, it's not going to work for the second two. Now, I'm not going to give you exactly how the least function should work, because that's going to be some homework for you to work on. There's one other topic that I wanted to cover. How do we call these functions that we've written? Well, as we've seen when going through the examples, it's really not that different than calling a function that's already built into the language. Sure enough, we can call add one with a number, and it works, as long as we have the parentheses that mean call this function. However, there are a few caveats. The first is that we have to be careful about where we call our function. What if we try to call add one before we've written it? Well, that's not going to work. And that's because it reads add one before it's read the definition of what add one even does. So what if you wanted to call a function before you defined it? Well, that's where invocation styles come in. So this style of invocation actually allows you to call the function before it's declared. So if we do log increased, 
it will work. It doesn't matter if we call log increase before or after the function. So as I said before, both styles of fun function invocation work perfectly well. Um, the main difference in, as far as use goes is that we have to be careful about where we're calling these functions that we write. If we use the, vari the variable declaration style, we have to make sure that we're only calling the functions afterwards. If we're using this style that does not declare a variable, it really doesn't matter. Beyond that, calling our homemade functions is exactly the same as calling the built-in functions. Well, that concludes part two of the What the Function series. Stick around for part three. We're, we're going to be exploring higher order functions. <laughs>